Okay, let's continue. Uh, sorry, recorded. So let's con continue from last time. Where did we stop? Oh, by the way, uh, the attendance. Uh. Here's the link for the attendance in the chat. And the password is... I know, what are you doing? <laughs> and the password is Sun, Sunny, S-U-N-N-Y. Okay. Okay. All right, so we will continue uh, from last time. Sina, um, now where did we stop? Anybody? Mana Solehin dengan Hambali ni? Tak ada Hambali seorang. Solehin mana? Tak ada video. Kena nak. Kena... Isi apa medium? Huh? Isi. Saya kalau isi Google Form dia off video. Tak dengar? Saya buka apps lain. Dia tengah isi Google Form tu, video dia tak fit in to Zoom ya. Yeah. Oh, kalau tengah isi Google Form dia hilang video. Hmm. For him, for some reason. Because I'm using phone. Ah, okay lah. Okay. Right, so where did we stop? You were talking about the electron and host energy level. And how, how they cannot occupy the same energy level. Okay. Do you have any more question on uh, slide one? Or oh, you understand everything? No, I don't. Uh, hmm? Regarding the slide on page, page 14, um, the band gap versus lattice constant. Hmm? Um, you said that lattice constant akan lattice constant decrease and band gap increase. Tapi um, graph tu complete. Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, you're talking. Saya buka slide juga lah. You're you're referring to the slides. Hmm. Yeah, just fourteen. Page nineteen. Ada page juga kat sini. Nineteen. Now band versus lattice. Ni, this one. Huh? Is it this one? No, no. Huh? Atas lagi medium. Atas ke bawah ke atas? Salah bawah. Wow. Which one? This? Oh. I don't understand. Which one? Uh, Is that the one with the color, color, mm -hmm. yeah. band gap? Which slide, sister? Atas lagi, atas lagi. Go Okay, this one. Okay. Uh, this one. Okay. So what is your question? Um, kalau kalau uh, band gap increase, the that is constant in decrease then. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be. Any more question? Can you explain about the diagram? Because so let me just throw chart pasal diagram ni. Tapi sebenarnya tak sempat nak explain pasal diagram ni. Can you tell me what you understand about this graph? The constant and pancake. Then. You need to start somewhere. I will not tell everything. Start somewhere, I will fill in the gap. A 
otherwise it's easy to say madam can you explain the whole slide forever and ever semua slide ah uh, boleh lah so i want you to so that you try to understand then i'll fill in the gap can you ready can i try madam yeah sam um looking at this graph uh, hmm. i take one example Uh, you can see oh, cakap je saya maksimum dah ni <laughs> Aluminium <laughs> ALP huh? ALP what is it? Aluminium Phosphite Phosphite ah. huh? <clears throat> For example the aluminium phosphite uh, When uh, we We add the add The AS The AS What is it? Yellow mass and I Um you can see the line between the between the aluminium phosphide and the aluminium arsenide you can see the line right uh, the line is aluminium phosphide uh, with arsenide uh, as the as the arsenide increase and we decrease the phosphide the band gap will decrease and the lattice constant will increase. Oh, that's what I understand. Mm. Is it? Good attempt. <laughs> But... Mm, uh, but maybe need to improve. Uh, I'm not saying it's 100% wrong. What else do you understand, the rest of you? Best of you, then I'll send the conductor device. Do you understand anything? Hey, man. What I understand is, for example, Uh, the uh, the aluminium phosphate just now uh, will emit green light something like that. Is that true? Uh, just one small part of the is a is yes this graph is showing that one small part of the graph the graph is telling many things so what Azam was saying is like some part of it but there's some truth some mythos there. Well, and then, but the <laughs> Ayman said yes. So one of these colors are here. It's actually uh, telling that the 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 material. So these are all material, lah. Silicon carbide, calcium phosphate, aluminium phosphate. These are all semiconductor material. And this semiconductor material, um, uh, apa? There are two types of semiconductor material. Alang-alang cerita pasal color ni masih cerita. So uh, previously we learned that uh, semiconductor uh, material can be classified into different uh, right we have into different we have uh, what do you call it uh, um, apa lagi uh, we categorize semiconductor material in apa lagi elemental and compound uh, elemental and compound so semiconductor material can also can also be divided into two category, another category called direct band gap material and indirect band gap material. Okay, so what is it? Uh, direct band gap material is, um, I wonder if it's... I give best. I give you two minutes, no one minute, to Google what is direct band gap material and indirect band gap material. Okay, do that.
and tell me what you got. What do you get? Mm, it say that for the direct uh, band gap material, mm -hmm. uh, if the crystal momentum of the electron and hole is the same in both conduction band and the valence band. So, what's the consequence? Uh, so electron can directly emit a photon. Okay. So what's the difference between uh, direct and indirect band gap material? No indirect gap material. It include crystalline silicon. Kalau eh. indirect, um, indirect is it doesn't say clearly here. Okay. Other people wants to help. Google Google how the why the sky is blue. Banyak jawapan kat internet tu kan daripada duk Google terkatung ke anime ke apa apa lah. Okay, so what's the difference? Kembali. Kembali. Oh, Kembali. Are you there? Can you hear me, Kembali? I cannot hear you. Anybody can hear anything? No. No. Tak dengar apa-apa. Okay. -apa. Oh, uh, Ambali, we cannot hear you. Awak oh, oh, cakap ke tak ni? Connecting to audio. Okay. okay. Madam, excuse me for a while. I want to take my book. Your food? You are book, book. alone? Huh? Buku, buku. Buku, ingat tu makan. Baru nak kata tak ajak kita makan. Okay. <laughs> Ambali. <laughs> ah, so, what's the difference? Direct and indirect when get material? Uh, the direct is the energy level between in the ballot and the conductor band is equal. The energy. Kau faham ke Najwa? Saya tak faham. Kau faham ada di sini ni. And tu kalau direct sama level. Apa? Sama level. Sama level. Apa yang sama? Apa yang direct? Means the the minus band dengan tu dia sama level. So apa konsekuensinya? So what? So uh, medium. Uh, it say that in term of emitting um, photon, kalau direct it it can emit proton. Electron can directly emit the proton. Tapi kalau indirect, he said a photon cannot be emitted because the electron must pass through an intermediate state and transfer momentum to a crystal like this. Okay. Emit photon or doesn't emit the photon, that's different. Good. So what, what is photon? Photon is in the nucleus of the okay, atom. Energy. What is photon? Light. So? Huh? Light. Light? Uh, what is uh, so if if indirect band gap material doesn't give out photon, what does it give give giving out? It doesn't give out anything. No energy must be you know, upper law of energy and 
energy tu kena bertukar you cannot be tak boleh di destroy tapi sebenarnya Allah boleh destroy tapi ni secular punya benda they say energy cannot be destroyed or oh, energy cannot be created they say but Allah can create energy but dalam konteks yang simplistic uh, apa science ni so if the direct band gap material gives out photon what does the indirect material gives out heat hmm heat okay what's the name of heat uh, scientific name of heat the particle of heat wave hmm wave uh, no particle macam okay photon is what light light what's the bit difference uh, uh, so apa nak kata ni uh, why do we call light photon is there any difference between normal light and photon that we hmm? what photon is like a particle of the of the light, light right yeah. okay good so heat what's the particle of heat Phonon. Huh? Phonon. Phonon. Good. Wow. So, okay, we go back. So, see, bukan yang susah pun. Nak boleh belajar sendiri. Saya tak ajar pun boleh. So, see, let's go. So, now you know about phonon and photon. So, we nampak macam cerdik sikit kan. Kalau orang tanya, what's phonon? Oh, you can answer. Okay, let's see. Phonon. Uh, firstly, I first. Huh? Go dengar. First time dengar. First time dengar. Yeah. So you become one step smarter today. You know about photon. So now you know about proton. Jangan confuse lah. Proton, phonon, photon. So kalau kadang saya saja nak buat awak confuse, saya bubur macam-macam dalam soalan tu kan. Tengok betul. Dia ni faham ke tak? Jangan tertukar. Tukar tu because it means totally different things. Okay, now. Uh, let's go back to this. Huh? So we have semi-conductor material, we have two, we have, uh, we can uh, categorize into direct band gap and indirect band gap material. What does it mean? It means that if we plot, this is the EK, E here is energy, K is momentum. Okay, I haven't shown you before this kind of graph. So normally yang band gap biasa yang kita draw tu, yang macam gini tu, uh, it's like this is the energy versus ni tak ada axis sebenarnya yang uh, x axis tu is is like a distance but it's not really distance okay yeah, it's just a manifestation of distance so um, but uh, if you plot the same yang yang tadi tu yang macam ni tapi the the y axis is still energy but the if you plot the x axis is momentum momentum of the apa nama electron hole then um, the band gap will look like this ni apa ni it will look like this it's not constant like this the the, the constant like this yang kita buat sama ni eh. we have connection band valence band ni this is a simplistic um uh, this is a simplistic uh, manifestation of this so sebenarnya yang ni this apa nak silap sebenarnya this one is actually this but we taking at the tip macam ni so Sambil kalau apa, hijau. You can see. So sebenarnya kalau saya draw macam ni. Dia akan jadi macam ni. Okay. So the actual band gap is more complicated than what we draw. So kalau after this, you'll be learning. This is this is a band gap. Uh, this is band diagram. Okay. This is a band diagram for um, semiconductor material material after this we'll be learning how to draw the band gap the semiconductor band diagram for a device pn junction they can jadi lagi complicated so that's why you need to understand this because this is the basic before we go drawing a more interesting apa uh, namanya uh, interesting diagram so 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 this is so this uh, if you if it if you draw it becomes like this right okay now I will wrap this off. So it for direct band gap material. So if you draw, if you do measurement in the in the lab, you will get this, you will get this graph for direct band gap material. But or by the energy of the electrons and holes. So the hole, the free electron will be here, the free hole will be here. The minimum, okay, this is the this is the 
definition of a direct blanket material. The minimum of the conduction band. So this is conduction band. This is the valence band. Conduction band. Valence band. Tapi bentuk dia macam tu. So the minimum of the conduction band is directly on top of the uh, maximum of the valence band. Okay, whenever uh, you find uh, any material that has the minimum of the conduction band is directly on top of the maximum of the uh, valence band, it means it's a direct band gap material. Okay, indirect band, band gap material is when uh, the, if you can see here, this is the conduction band, this is the valence band, the, the minimum of the conduction band is not directly on top of the maximum of the valence band. And this is called indi indirect band gap material. Okay, that's the definition. Next is, what's the consequence? So what if this is so? This is actually very important. And this is the basis or the fundamental for optoelectronics, for photonics device. Okay, so because what happens is, there is a green. Uh, so if you have electron over here, okay, uh, recombined with the okay. Next, bit, I need to introduce the concept of recombination. Do you know what's recombination? No. Hmm? Pergabungan semula. Wow, hebat ni. Pergabungan semula. Sila explain. <laughs> Saya lama dah tak cakap macam Melayu ha, in, in this thing. So I remember so my my ex-student was uh, telling me she, he was like writing something on petala electron. Wow, <laughs> petala, you know, orbits. <laughs> I never use this kind of words. I, you know, I studied in the last time it's SPM in Malay. Lepas tu like forever after the English. So until now. So I never, saya tak tahu bahasa Melayu sangat. Okay, so uh, generation and recombination is a very, very important process in a semiconductor material and therefore device. Okay, what is it? Ada tak dalam slide tu lah? Tak ada lah. Ada tak generation and recombination dalam slide tu? Hmm? Tak, saya madam saya, tak, kita orang tak baca slide, tak penting slide ni. Saya madam kata tak penting. Maka kami pun tak tengok lah. Betul ke? <laughs> Awak ni pun. No. Apa yang lain ya? Hmm. Slide nombor dua dah apa? Awak ada buka slide nombor dua. Saya pun tak lupa dah benda dalam let me open first. Slide number two, what we have is slide number two. Slide two. Saya tak improve, improve saya punya slide. Ada saya improve. Slide three, Madam. Ha? Huh? Slide three? Slide, ha, slide three. Slide three ada the combination? Ha? Ha. Slide three? Ada, ada. Three? Slide three. Three. Tiga, yeah. tiga. Dia buka tiga. Kat mana? Uh, yang nombor apa? Uh, tujuh. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So macam mana saya nak transfer hak ni? I'm not sure. Hmm. Let's stop sharing. Okay, so sekarang ni saya akan jump daripada slide ke slide pula. Kesian awak. So, how to study? Macam mana nak study ni, madam? Saya pun tak tahu. So, awak pandai-pandai susun nafal awak. So, the way I will teach, saya bertukar setiap semester. Semester ni, I will teach you based on your question. So, saya akan mengapu situ, mengapu sini. So, so because everything are interrelated. So, kalau awak rasa macam confused, then awak susun balik. Okay. So, yeah, I need to open the slide number three. Because in order for, for 
for me to explain to you direct and indirect bandgap material, you need to understand the combination. Kalau tak dia macam, tak ada meaning. Macam tu lah, Ming, mingling less. Tak boleh pula buka. Apa tak buka ni? Why? My Google Drive tak boleh buka. So, tak apalah saya draw je lah. Boleh? Okay. Awak boleh buka slide tu. Yang awak nak tengok tu. Okay, direct and indirect band gap material. Lah. So, kita tak masuk di situ. Now, in order to explain this, we need to understand recombination and generation. What is it? Recombination is uh, when, okay, if I draw a semiconductor material band gap. Lah. So, this is the energy. So, this is the conduction band. This is the valence band. Conduction band, valence band. Right. So if I have uh, an electron, okay, we say that uh, before this we we have uh, you know discussed that where are the location of free electrons and free holes? Where are the free electrons, uh, brothers and sisters? Conduction band. Conduction band. Where are the free holes? Balance. Balance. Balance band. Balance bands. And where are the Bound electron. Cannot hear you. Mm, balance. Balance, balance. balance. Balance and bound hole. Conduction. Okay, good. So now, if you have an electron over here, this electron is it uh, free or a uh, bound? Free. Okay, because is uh, because the electron is in the conduction band, right? So, but you can see that ele this electron as a, is at a higher energy. Remember, the y-axis here is energy. So, so this is electron at a higher energy. Electron always wants to go to the lowest energy possible. Okay, electrons, its character, it always wants to go to the lowest energy possible. It's stable over there. It's lagi tenang. The same as us, right? If you go to the mountain, on top of the mountain, you feel, do you feel, uh, you know, uh, stable or no? You don't feel stable. You don't, you don't feel happy or relaxed. You want to go to the lowest. You want to be at the ground. Then you, you feel relaxed and happy. So similar to the electron. So this electron, where, but... In order for the electron to be useful, it has to be in the conduction band. But the electrons are not happy there. They are there, they are not happy. So what they will do is they will try to find opportunity to go to to go to this to the lower level. Because we can the electron cannot be in the uh, in the band gap, right? Cannot because it's forbidden band gap, there's no energy level or state. So this electron will want to go to the lower level. So the lower level is, is in the uh, balance band here. So if the electron do, does that, electron can do that. And this process is called recombination. The process where the electron loses energy. So, so because this electron at a high energy, if it goes to the balance band, it loses energy. And this process where the electron um, goes to the balance band called recombination, and actually what happens is these free electrons recombine with free holes because in the same time, here we have free hole. Okay, so so when free electron it was moving freely and then free hole move freely, they recombine. What happens to them when they recombine? The electron, the free electron, and the free hole recombine. What happens to them? Annihilate. Yes. So, what does it mean? It basically destroy each other. Basically, uh, turn back into um mm -hmm. photon or phonon. Uh, uh, 
separuh betul. So what happen is when the electron hole recombine, so free electrons. I know my supervisor always make a like a, my my Christian supervisor lah. Dia kata recombination ni dia kata macam electron hole ni opposite macam lelaki perempuan tak boleh duduk dekat bahaya. So dia can recombine. So dia punya dia punya <laughs> dia punya prof tu lah John tu dulu dia selalu kata macam tu. Saya rasa macam pelik sikit lah kalau nak bagi on the Muslim tu sense. So, tapi macam tu lah electron hole ni kalau free electron meets free hole dia takkan duduk saya saja dia akan recombine. Dia memang akan nak recombine. So when the electron uh, at the top here uh, meets any free hole it will recombine. So when it recombines we are losing free carrier. When ele free electrons meet free hole dia recombine dia akan masuk dia akan jadi bound electron and bound hole. Okay. So when we come bound electron bound hole, so this energy which is lost must be transferred to uh, another type of energy. So bila this when recombination happens, it loses energy. If a, if it's a direct band gap, so electron kat sini, recombine with the hole over here, right? For direct band gap, the energy, the energy lost. How much is the energy loss? Anybody can know here? How much is the energy loss from this diagram here? The band gap? Yes. So the good. So the energy loss is the band gap. So the energy loss, the amount of the energy loss is actually the uh, the the amount of the band gap because it goes from here to here, right? So and this loss, if it's direct band gap material. The energy loss is in terms of photon light. So only certain materials give out light. Not all semiconductor material give you give you light. Does silicon give you light? If you inject any you know current, does it give light? No, right? So silicon is indirect band gap material. So the one that you say uh, just now, uh, yellow. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, tadi green yeah, okay, element phosphide tadi. So it's a type of uh, direct band gap material where it gives us uh, where it gives out photon and the color and the wavelength of the photons that was given out is equivalent to the energy of the band gap. So the color of any LED that you see, merah, biru, hijau, kuning. Is actually reflecting the energy loss here, which is the band gap energy. So it means that the light that comes out is the characteristic of the material. Only certain material gives out certain light. Okay. So similarly, um, this recombination. Uh, similarly, uh, here, if this electron, okay, so now we are looking at indirect band gap material, it will also want to recombine this electron here want to recombine, they want to lose energy. So it needs to go here, right? It needs to go to the balance band where it will meet still free hole. Free electron will meet free hole. However, in the EK diagram uh, here, EK diagram here, what happens is when they recombine, it's not straight forward. It means it will do like this. Okay, there are two intermediate steps. So it will go down here and it will go down, down there to recombine. Okay, and because of this indirect recombination, uh, the metal doesn't give out photon. Photon is light huh? in terms of particle. Uh, so this, if indirect band gap, you have recombination, it will give out phonon. Phonon is the particle for heat. It becomes hotter, warmer. So that's why uh, if you put a lot of current uh, in uh, in a semiconductor material, one of the problem that you will have a lot of recombination maybe. Uh, and this and and for silicon, for example, instead of giving out light, it will give out phonon. It becomes hotter and hotter and hotter. Okay. So so that's the difference between direct and band gap, uh, in direct band gap uh, semiconductor and indirect band gap semiconductor. Any question here? Tak ada. 
Wait, what about holes then? Does uh, does it when recombination and generation also? Ah, uh, good question. Yes, it does. Uh, but you will uh, normally we'll talk about electron because hole is just the opposite. So if the if the when we say uh, recombination, it means that here the electron uh, recombine here, whereby the, actually the free holes will go there. It's in pairs. So oh, so it both happen at the same time. Sorry. Yeah, but we don't normally talk about it. We just talk about electron, which is unfair. But that's just, but the electron, we understand that hole are having the hole will go over here, and then because in order for the hole to be bound, the hole have to go back here. The electron have to be here, right? Right. So, so because when recombination happens, you are losing free carriers. You're using free electron and you're using uh, free, free holes. Holes. Okay. Any more question? Paham ke tak ni? So, there are, for example, here, there are many examples you can see from the diagram just now. Uh, many uh, material of in di uh, direct band gap, gallium arsenide, gallium phosphide, uh, aluminum phosphide. Here, silicon, silicon carbide, germanium. Yeah, so so it depends on the how the crystal structure was made. Allah created some material to be direct and some material to be indirect. Which is Alhamdulillah, if we Allah doesn't create direct banquet material, we will not have LEDs now. Right? So 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 that's why semiconductor is very interesting. Now so any question here before we go to uh, generation? So alalang cerita recombination, I will teach, I will talk about generation because everything in pairs. So we have generation, recombination, you will have generation. Okay, ada soalan? Tak ada? Kau faham? I will better tanya, nanti keluar quiz. Tak kata awak yang tak tanya soalan. Uh, what is the application they use in direct uh, materials if the if they give out heat basically so we know that heat uh, usually cause defects to a certain materials right so why not use just direct mm, material that's not right to say heat cause defects is that right well depends well because if my computer cpu becomes too hot then it's gonna cause problem yeah, so but you, just be careful with the word defect. Oh, I see. Sorry about that. In semiconductor, defect means that what, what we talked before, the vacancy, the dislocation. Oh, okay. Oops, sorry about that. So, as oh, I mentioned, sorry, yeah, semiconductor ni dia very sensitive to term. So, so, maybe you want to say it becomes malfunction. Ah, yes. That's so, right. But it's different than defect. Defect in semiconductor means something else. It means the one that you see in the uh, microscope yang saya tunjuk tu. And it will give out. Uh, it will, uh, so it's very specific. Ah, uh, defects in semiconductor. So, uh, no, that's why. Uh, normally, okay. So, uh, this generation and uh, recombination will happen in semiconductor. But if we design the device properly, uh, you you can reduce the recombination, and you can have current flowing with less recombination. Okay, that's where the that's why we need to understand the physics, uh, and therefore the engineers use the physics to to design the device. Later on, we'll go to device. We'll talk about that. So actually, although recombination also ha still happens in silicon and silicon carbide, or any indirect band gap material, but um, we can control the recombination process. Okay. Uh, so any. Any more question here? Ah, uh, Hamali, okay lah. Oh, Hamali. Yeah, itu. Betul ke ni? Oh, betul. Okay lah. Ya. Oh, jangan. Make sure you understand. Sebab last, last semester. Ada orang yang kena, okay, I will tell you what happens. Eh? I will tell you what happens in semiconductor. Normally, I will try not to fail my students. But some students will fail. Um, so, what do I do? Last, every semester, even 
master ke PhD. I will do the, the, the PhD will make subject with master. Um, if they fail the final exam, what I will do is because if you fail the final exam, you fail the whole course, right? So, so Allahul Azim, all the carry mark doesn't matter to you uh, to, uh, if you fail the final exam. So normally I will tell the students, if you fail the final exam, I will interview you to give you a second chance. Kalau tak memang dah lah awak final semester, fail pula semi-conductor device, you know. <laughs> Sedih pun orang kan cerita. So, so normally what I will give is uh, before saya tulis markah dalam tu, bila saya dah mark under tu nampak awak fail. I will, normally I will tell all students, okay get ready after final exam, if I mark and I call your name, get ready for an interview. So out jangan delete lagi lah memory memory awak pasal uh, semicon. Then I will I will call for interview. If I'm not happy with your, the interview, ada juga lepas interview pun tak boleh jawab juga. I will ask the student to apa redo the exam dalam masa berapa ni. Kalau tak happy juga, biasanya masa in, in, saya akan menggrill betul betul lah masa interview tu. Uh, so kalau budak tu memang pernah sekali, the student is not um, Memang tak faham lah. Tanya tu jawab lain, tanya tu jawab lain, tanya ni jawab lain. So lepas tu kata, I'm sorry brother, I have to pay you. Dah bagi banyak chance. So I, normally I will give the interview. I will give to, if kalau interview you pass, tak perlu dah buat, you know, the the final exam. Again. But if the interview tak pass, biasanya saya akan panggil. So last semester adalah tiga orang. Had to go through that. In the end, dia pass lah. Tapi dia tanya kenapa. Saya pun tak faham kenapa. Normally, satu gig bila saya bagi kuis ni, satu gig, ha, satu lagi mungkin lah saya rasa ramai juga yang kena, yang fear sebab mungkin saya buat open book. And the mistake of the student, kenapa awak tak jawab ni? Saya kata dah semua benda kena jawab. Uh, and then, kawan awak boleh jawab, kenapa awak tak jawab? Dia jawab, dia kata, masa tu dia punya, dia dia macam anxious. And dia spend too much, sebab open book kau boleh google. Tapi the the students spend too much time on googling sampai satu soalan satu soalan sampai hal lain tak buat. And that's it lah. Awak tak jawab soalan macam mana tak buat. So kesimpulannya um, pengajaran dari situ make sure awak tak ambil masa sangat and make sure awak faham. Sebab student tu dalam kelas saya rasa dia faham tu saya pelik tu tapi um, bila saya tengok rupanya quiz dia pun tak bagus juga. So nanti I will give the quiz you will see. Sebabnya dia kuat apa I told you right subject course uh, semiconductor device ni dia tak macam subjek-subjek lain dia tak ada mathematics you need to explain and then you need to be careful macam tadi ada defects what do you mean uh, sebab ni saya akan faham defect yang semiconductor yang saya ajar so padahal awak masukkan benda lain which is cannot there are certain things so macam you need to know what is recombination what is generation out is kaki kata oh the the electron recombines recombines mean you are losing free carriers and the electron goes from conduction band to valence hold from valence to conduction tu maksud recombination so tak boleh macam tersalah ha, macam pakai word recombination sebab memang dia ada specific meaning okay going back to here so uh, you understand now recombination right uh, what recombination and the, there's a pair whenever you have recombination you also have generation Okay, so I will share again my screen. So, tak tahu slide mana lah. Nanti awak cepat pandai lah tengok kat slide tu kat mana. So, anything you don't understand the slide, you can ask me. So, generation is the opposite of uh, recombination. So, ni 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 kita draw recombination lah. Eh. So, sebelah ni, kanan ni, I will draw the generation. Okay. So, if you have electron, gen, okay. Here, for recombination, the electrons goes from the conduction band to the valence band. Generation is the opposite. The electron goes from valence band to the conduction band. Conduction band. And this is generation. And vice versa, it means that the whole goes from the conduction band to the valence band. Ini pun sebenarnya vice versa dia apa ni macam tu lah dia memang electron hole ni dekat opposite kalau yang ni pergi situ the, op the hole will go the opposite way okay and this is generation whenever you have electrons 
bound electron. So you will see here, the electron from the valence band is actually bound electron, right? So when you go to conduction band, it becomes free. That's free right. electron. So this opposite recombination, you lose free carriers. Generation, you create, you get new uh, free carriers. And this, uh, sometimes uh, the word, if you read in the books or you watch videos, we can say the electron, is, this process is called generation. But what we say, the electron are being excited from the valence band to the conduction band. Kata anda excited. Oh, Sienna. Electron more excited. <laughs> so I told you they're happy, they're excited. Tak pernah tengok lagi lah. Electron sedih tapi dia ada excited. So, <laughs> so the electron will be excited from uh, from uh, this uh, valence band to the uh, conduction band and becomes free. Hole also being excited from the conduction band to valence band, it becomes free. So for us to get free carriers, we can get it through generation process. If we want to lose free carriers, we can uh, get uh, we can um, go through recombination process. This recombination process gives out loses loses energy, and it can lose energy into two types that's mentioned before: photon and phonon. While generation not lose energy, gain energy. So this electron here, in order for it to be excited to the conduction band, it must get some energy. So because this is lower energy, right? Ni band get lah. So this electron is at lower energy. In order for it to go to the conduction band, it must get. We we say perkataan dia gained. It must gain energy. So the electron will gain energy from where does the electron gain energy? Can you guess this electron? Where does it gain? Where do they get the energy from? To go here. Increase of temperature. Apa? Increase of temperature. Ah, good. Temperature. So temperature have energy, right? You have, macam mana kita calculate energy in temperature? Apa tahu? E equals to is it half kT. Hmm, saya pun tak ingat. Tapi ada kursi dia kat situ. So you can google it. Google lah semua benda lah. So, you know one thing brothers and sisters uh, in life, it, as an engineer later on, when you work, you, they, they, they don't, you don't have to memorize everything. You just need to understand the concept. The detail of it, you can always Google. The company pun takkan expect awak tahu. Cuma dia nak kena, awak kena faham. So, dia bila cerita tu, you kena, kena lah memorize it. Dia takkan lah tak tahu generation, combination tu apa kan. Tapi, for example, how the equation, they will not expect you to remember. Because you can always, as an engineer, you can always Google. But how to use, where to find the information, you need to know. Uh, that's a difference between a first class engineer and a second class or no class. That no class engineer, they cannot study on their own. So that's why here in the class, I'm trying to get you to learn on your own as well. So that later, kalau keluar nanti, um, you can learn, awak akan jadi, orang akan suka awak lah. Sebab bagi satu topik, you, can, you know how to learn. How you can you know how to get the information and understand? Okay, so um, so Skani, uh, generation um, recombination you lose energy, generation you gain energy. You can gain energy from the surrounding temperature. Room temperature have a heat, so this electron can go there. So at zero Kelvin, what is the temperature at room temperature? What's the what's the Kelvin of the room temperature? Anybody? Huh? 238? No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's way too high. <laughs> Berapa? Room for Kelvin. 105. Huh? Tak tahu. 293. Oh, I was right. right. 293, 298. So, senang 300 Kelvin. Hello. Medium. Yeah. Just a hot day. For the term exciting electron. Apa? That exciting the electron. The electron uh -huh. is excited. That yeah. term is used for the free electron or bound electron or both? For both. Free free electron and free hole. 
Excited means the electron gains energy and hole gains. Okay, the okay. So but they're opposite, ah. Eh? So jadi the electron here gains energy. The hole is actually uh, dalam term yang negatif dia sebenarnya gain energy juga, tapi dalam bentuk yang negatif. Sebab tu biasanya kita tak kat cerita pasal hole Sebab dia confusing kita cara Sebenarnya dia gain energy tapi dia go to gain at the negative Sebab dia opposite You understand? So normally dia gain energy tapi dia energy on the negative side So nampak macam dia turun Tapi uh, basically kita tak nak confuse We we'll talk about electron yes Tapi both uh, both electron and hole be excited can, can what, what about the free electron? Can we use excited for the term excited for the free electron? What do you mean? I don't understand. Yeah, we use term excited for the bound electron, right? For Tapi free electron nak gimana? Uh, yeah, I'm saying that does the free electron get excited? Ah, okay. Interesting question. Okay. So you are saying, you say draw satu, yeah. Awak yang, bukan saya yang nak ajar, awak yang tanya. So, jadi saya ajar je lah. So, so it means that you're asking me this free electron here, can can this be excited, right? That is what you're asking, right? Mm -hmm. So, if it's excited, dia pergi mana? Dia pergi naik atas, right? So, so excited means gain energy. Yes. So, you're asking me, boleh tak electron ni pergi naik atas? Oh. Like this? Uh, the answer is possible. Uh, nanti awak akan belajar the uh, uh, apa nama the uh, different uh, generation process. Satunya dia kita panggil OG. OG recombination. Dia is a type of recombination. Tapi salah satunya elektron tu instead of going bawah dia kena atas. Nantilah tak sampai lagi level. Tapi basically I'm just saying you boleh free electron ni boleh naik atas. Tapi level tinggi sikit lah. kita baru tadi kan level ni. Okay. Okay. Alright. Right. Thank you madam. Okay. Ada lagi soalan? Hmm. Ada? Betul ni. Okay, so the electron uh, can be excited uh the the from any any energy coming from energy tu boleh datang dari mana-mana for example uh, room temperature temperature is also a source of energy sometimes we can also uh, bombard with uh, apa nama ni um, we can bombard with a uh, photon photon kita buat bagi photon kat sini oh, maknanya kita suluh cahaya dekat semiconductor ni this photon energy will be absorbed by the electron and you have generation and nama yang ni bagi photoluminescence tapi tak ada terminasi ni uh, lepas tu kompleks tak payah tak payah tak payah cerita lagi try not to confuse you tapi maknanya yang saya nak cerita kat sini the sources of energy can be coming from the temperature it can be coming from incoming incoming photon and it can be also from radiation Radiation heat, radiation have energy, this electron will be excited. Okay, any question? So this two process, huh? recombination and generation process. Okay, good. Any more question? So let's go back to your slide. Apa lagi soalan nak tanya? Atau kat sini? So this is what the brother Aiman was saying. Uh, yeah. So if you can see here, the material here within this color, yang ada color ni, it means that it gives out a light, visible light. Okay, dia ada, betul light pula ada visible tak visible. What does visible light mean? Something is the color. Can see with eye. Yes, visible light means light that you can see with your eyes. So that's another interesting thing that Allah created. Um, we created human we can see only certain wavelengths. Uh, other wavelengths we cannot see. We cannot see jin. They have, <laughs> angel, angel. they have their own wavelength which we cannot see. 
but uh, certain animals can see that right? uh, the creation of jin to shaitan ke. so they are also in this world but you cannot see we we <laughs> if so as any kita off record nanti orang kata saya <laughs> saya gila ke apa <laughs> kalau kalau nampak hantu tu macam mana saya tak boleh nampak pula we can only see visible light right because Dapat. everything is based on science right now. Huh? Apa? No. The, the, How do you explain can, this? Ha? Yeah, oh, so can we explain it? Do you believe ada hantu tak? Yes. Of course. They can transform. Apa? Transform? Transform jadi apa? Do you believe that? Can it reflect with the light? Uh, uh, it changes its change. It, it can change its wavelength. Tapi it's very difficult for it to do so. Uh, dia akan mati. Some of them only like strong. Uh, jin yang jahat ni yang tak ada kerja ni uh, untuk buat benda tu. So Allah has already made the world so beautifully that we Allah put the hijab that we cannot see them. But the thing is they can see us because their wavelength. You know, kita move our body has a wavelength. So you know, whenever we move, we have a wavelength. Our wavelength is uh, we are moving very slow. So our so we can we can catch things that which are moving very slow. As I mentioned, electrons are moving very fast. So that's why we can never see electrons. So so we are moving slower than the this this creation. So they can see us because we cannot see them because they, they are moving very very fast. And that's how the creation of Allah. And we believe whether whether we see them or we don't see them, uh, they are there. But we also believe that they are only a creation like others that Allah created, and Allah is more powerful than them. So bila kita takut pada mereka tu, it's something not right. Okay, they are just creation of Allah and Allah can destroy them in uh, in in no time. Tapi masalahnya bila manusia buat syirik dan minta pertolongan pada dia. Uh, then then that's a problem. So 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 aja nak cerita. So this is like so our eyes can only see certain wavelength. Uh, and there are also so detectors. Lepas ni kita akan belajar detector kan. Detectors uh, can detect visible light and also it much for example your camera and then I make gambar. Oh. Okay. Saya get. Okay, saya balik di tubuh di MC. So for example kita ambil gambar, awak ambil gambar kamera awak tu kan. It's a detector sebenarnya. It's a detecting light in your handphone. So can it detect other things? No because it's being uh, designed to be able to detect a certain wavelength. But for example military Uh, use uh, in uh, at night Google tu kau oh, panggil kau black out kan suka main game kan saya night vision night vision Google tak dia tahu lah saya anti game so <laughs> jangan buat dia tahu saya yang main game dan kita akan syarah 3 jam pasal benda ni because i just i think it's a waste of time and i don't think you will you will you, you will benefit much by our buat kerja-kerja volunteer yang ramai orang nak mati kat luar sana tu bagi kita tolong mereka daripada main game Okay so If you military wise, uh, they they have this night, apa pun night night apa night, night vision, I night vision Google. You know how it works? It's uh, amplifying whatever the source of light coming from outside. No, no, no. That's why in semiconductor device you will learn. Uh, they are using they will call it the uh, optical detector, but they are, they are detecting not visible light. Sebab visible light kan tak nampak. They are detecting infrared. Can you see infrared? No. Oh, there was there was IRNV. There's a different types. Sorry. Sorry. So, they are, so because it, it means that uh, uh, night vision tu, dia, dia nampak apa sebenarnya? Dia nampak manusia bergerak, right? Dia nampak tank coming, right? Tu ke tak? Hmm. So, this manusia, the human that moves and the tank that moves actually gives out heat. So, the heat is actually infrared. So if we can detect the infrared and we convert it into pictures, we can see. So our eyes cannot see, but the detector can see and it's translated into a picture. So that's why we can see. So that's that's how a uh, uh, night vision Google is only detecting infrared. So and even the technology even you know even better. Um, you you have you heard yang um, kita tak ada dalam Malaysia, CI Malaysia punya yang apa yang komen-komen punya teknologi but kalau US ke Russia dia have this um, fly apa dia apa nama dia jet yang dia tak boleh detect tu pernah dengar oh, stealth, stealth jet ah uh, stealth ke apa uh, 
you know what they do? Uh, they can camouflage the infrared. So when they camouflage the infrared, the normal kita punya night vision yang beli yang murah tu, Malaysia ada tu, cannot cannot see it. So so you know if you understand physics and engineering, you can play with it until it becomes something that because if you understand how it works, then you can know how the limitation of it. So limitation of a nighttime vision is only it will only detect the uh, the infrared. If you can camouflage infrared, means we we kita buat dia kita kita remove the infrared coming out from the human body or from the tank. Kita uh, macam blind lah, tak nampak. I think the technical term is called heat heat signature. Heat what? Heat signature. You know, like sign signature. Yeah, that's yeah. what we call it. Yeah. So so there are many many so it comes with so but in semiconductor device you'll be learning the very basics of it. Uh, so everything interesting and smart comes from the understanding what is it. So you will be learning in this class about the how to make a detector after this. Uh, how to make a laser LED? A laser LED pun banyak kegunaan dia. Not only in the human uh, human life ni, normal life, but in military also. Okay, so let's go back to. Alamak, saya duduk rekod sepanjang ni ni tak apa lah. Oops. <laughs> okay, saya kena edit lah sikit kan. Government Malaysia cari saya saya duduk mengata Malaysia. Okay, let's go back to. Tak ah, buka saja apa uh, Dalam Bisa social mesti ada saja Habis, habis awak punya uh, uh, Apa Courses ni saya kena tangkap Okay now Alamak kenapa dia tak ni Just gonna share Okay Okay So that's uh, Okay So ni kita pasal kat sini lah So that's how uh, Apa nama ni uh, The visible <laughs> Nak cerita pasal jin tadi lah So, so silicon carbide gives our, what's that color? Blue? Ah, okay. huh? Actually, interesting. No, silicon carbide is a indirect bagaimana material. Kenapa dia kat situ? I think huh? sebab dia, okay, uh, dia kat sini sebab, saya pun tak tahu kenapa dia kat sini. Saya rasa yang, yang ada kal, it shouldn't, it is an indirect bagaimana material. So, tak tahu kenapa okay. ni. Okay. Can you find out? Not sure. <laughs> It's related, right? Um, for your information, uh, uh, Faiz is doing research on silicon carbide. Sebab tu dia tanya pasal silicon carbide ni. So, silicon carbide is indirect bandgap material. It shouldn't give out any light. Tapi sebab, saya rasa, sebab uh, lattice concern ni kat sini and bandgap yang ni, dia duduk dalam ni. Tapi tak semestinya, dia give out light. Uh, gallium phosphate saya tahu dia memang keluar ni. Gallium phosphate yang lagi jauh. Ring selenite ni saya tak pasti. So hmm sebab dia uh, pala yang pala kat sini ni it just uh, reflecting the band gap. So, band gap ni dia akan keluar warna ni. Kiranya material tu direct band gap material. You understand? So How do you get the colors? Again, how do you get these colors? How does certain material gets the color emit the color that certain color? How does it work? Anybody? When it lose energy. Okay, when they lose energy, where the energy is the bandgap. photon or phonon? Energy of a photon. No. Photon, photon. No, photon when energy. The energy of the band gap, right? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. So which is here, ni band gap ni. Sebab tu dia band gap yang ni, kalau very, kalau kalau lah band gap dia 2, 2 EV, it means that it will give up color of yellow. If it's the band gap is like green, uh, if it's 2.5, it's it will give up green. But, not necessarily all, for example, you can have a, a material with the band gap of 2, but doesn't give out yellow light because it's indirect material. Oh, faham tak saya cuba cakap lah. Hmm. So the band gap can be the numbers there. Tapi kalau dia indirect, dia tak keluar dia tak keluar pun colour ni. Okay? Because it, it give uh, phonon ya? Yeah, yes, it will give out phonon. Okay. Hmm. So not many actually. Uh, not many are from the, that gives out, um, uh, apa nama, it's direct band gap material. No, normally, if you look at the, here, 
the direct blanket materials are the 3-5 group, 3-5. Silicon, germanium is from group 4, right? Silicon, germanium is group, group 4. It's a semiconductor device. But group 3 and group 5, we would, normally we, can, we call it 3-5 material. Okay, for example, 3-5 material is gallium arsenide, indium phosphide. Uh, it can be indium, gallium, arsenide. So that's a 3-5 material. And this 3-5 material mostly, uh, I'm not saying all, mostly are direct blanket material. And they are more expensive to make. So silicon, ni, um, the technology is very mature. It's not as expensive as gallium arsenide or indium phosphide. So if you can see that, uh, apa ni? Oh, memang macam itulah Dia lagi mahal Lagi susah So research in Malaysia pun tak banyak on 3.5 If you look and research in Malaysia 3.5 material ni memang tak, tak banyak Sebab kita tak ada resources It's expensive Banyakkan kat Malaysia on silicon Okay, siap Malaysia In order to make high-end research We need money Which means that the government need to be stable and rich if the government is stable and rich, we have a lot of money, we can do a lot of high-end research. So, macam it's unfair juga nak kata kita ni uh, ke belakang lah, compared to US ke UK ke, because they have a lot of money. They can pump a lot of money to do research on the area. So, we we should do our best within the resources that we have. Okay? So, lagi apa lagi awak nak cerita pasal ni? Apa lagi yang awak nak tahu? Awak tahu? Saya tak cerita lagi apa kepentingan what do you think kepentingan ni this this graph penting atau tak penting ah uh, ai siapa yang dok solve ini ada tak orang yang senyap ini ha uh, aina lah pula hmm aina is this graph important if yes why if no tak ada why lah if no, apa guna saya letak dalam slide tu kan? Kau tak penting. <laughs> ha, Aina. Aina. Hmm? Do you think this uh, graph important or no? It is important. Why? Likewise. Hmm. Why? I cannot hear you. Answer me, Aina, yang senyap. If you don't know, you say you don't know. Saya, I am still digesting what you are saying just now. Oh. Okay. Don't know yet. But this has nothing to do with what I said just now. This is, bukan nothing to do lah, but this is the overall picture. Just now, I just con concentrate on the middle here, but actually this graph, is very important the overall picture why you think yang it has a connection that what i taught last last class a bit clue sikit lah ha uh. answer me aiman Aiman? Because of defect. Mm, explain. Aiman? Can you I mean can you explain? What do you mean? It's okay to answer it wrong. The point is I want you to try. Bila awak tak try, maksudnya awak tak berfikir. 
masalah ummah sekarang ni sebab manu, sebab orang Islam tak berfikir tu masalah kita. So kita hanyalah pat turut dan pengikut yang kita tak berani dan berfikir walaupun it's okay tu fikir salah. Nanti saya betulkan lah kalau salah. Tapi the point is kita kena fikir. Kena sebab kita tak biasa berfikir memang susah sikit lah. Tapi we should one one thing about this class I want to train you to think. So Aiman, give me a, a explanation of what you say just now. Uh, semiconductor structure uh, has two type, which is which uh, homo structure and hetero structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the graph can show uh, which structure uh, give give defect the most something like that. Which structure what? Can you repeat? Uh, which structure? Um, produce uh, more defect or less. Can you give an example? You're on the right track. Can you give an example? Yeah. Kalau maka 100% saya bagi awak 50 to 60% dah. So try to get 100. Uh, boleh Aiman? Hmm. Uh. Tak boleh. Ah, uh, siapa nak tolong? Kita ni bagi homo structure, hetero structure. Azam, tolong Aiman ni. Madam, you ask for example, right? Ah uh, yes. I can help. Apa? Saya dengar. I can help him. Oh, biar dia lemas. Kita <laughs> sama-sama tengok dia lemas. Ya, yeah, dia. Tak ada orang nak tolong. Tak ada seorang berani nak tolong dia. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe apa? Maybe from... I try, madam. Okay. Uh, like you say in the previous class, uh, we want to create uh, the perfect as possible. So, so, yeah, it will happen. You know why you're taking on too many? How do so? So, yang pasal kita ada pada graf ni lah, okay, based on the lattice constant mm. uh, only mm. is that we can know which materials are suitable to be combined with each other without mm. causing mechanical, uh, without causing mechanical stress. Okay, can, so, can you give an example here, where, apa yang kita boleh combine? So, from the slide you given us is the aluminum arsenide and gallium arsenide, but if I have to take on myself, I'll take about aluminum phosphate and gallium phosphate or silicon with aluminum phosphate. So, yeah. Okay. Alright. Uh, thank you. Yes, you are right. Tapi saya nak betulkan sikit. So, this graph is actually very important because number one, um, it will give us number one is the 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 number the lattice constant. How big is the lattice constant so that we can make a device. However, plus also, uh, it's actually not as simple as that. Lattice constant is just one of the parameters uh, that uh, will define the uh, will define the mechanical stress. But there are since the, the the atom the arrangement of atom is not only on the what do you call it 
not only on the what do you call it uh, the lattice constant but you know the 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 atom uh, have structure three D structure yes okay? so uh, ada diamond ada cubic ada macam macam arrangement so that, so because not only that there are many other uh, consideration for us yang tadi kalimul ni Uh, we 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 just take as an engineer. We don't need to understand everything. We need to understand the basics, and then the rest we just take information. For example, in from here, uh, you can see the line here. Can you see the lines? This line here. What this line is telling you, uh, which means that these are the materials that you can, uh, apa nama ni? You can make heterostructure, or you can make um. Mm, okay, not make smooth. It means that sorry, sorry. It can you can make compound semiconductor. Okay, tadi heterostructure dengan uh, compound sem semiconductor lain kan? Heterostructure means one semiconductor material you put another semiconductor material. Compound semi uh, uh, semiconductor means ketul semiconductor material. So from here there are two things that you can get. Number one is for the heterostructure, yes. You can make a uh, gallium and allium phosphide. Maybe you can make, uh, you can try to make. You don't know whether it will work, but at least from the lattice constant, it shows that you can gallium phosphide, allium phosphide, silicon. You can make heterostructure. Uh, um, we also have a set heterostructure of silicon, germanium, silicon and germanium. So because this is only like, uh, it's not very far, but for example, silicon carbide. You want to do it with um, silicon is a bit far, okay? Silicon carbide and silicon, the lattice constant is very far. However, there are now this kind of what research they can actually put silicon on silicon carbide, uh, silicon carbide on silicon. Tapi a lot of defect. You have layers of defect. Bawa lah tu boleh. Tapi mana tak boleh lah. Mana untuk tadi kali level silicon and silicon carbide tak boleh. So um, So that's number one. On this heterostructure, you can see the lattice constant. You can go choose any which is close. Maybe silicon and gallium arsenide may be possible. It's not that far. Another thing, the blue line here is showing that we can make compound semiconductor. For example, we can have aluminium, gallium phosphide. So can you, this is gallium phosphide, right? Aluminium. So you can, you can add Aluminium phosphide. You put a, an element of gallium. It can be aluminium gallium phosphide. And this aluminium gallium phosphide, you can play with how much of the gallium that you put. The 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 band gap is in between these two. And this is called band gap engineering. Kalau pun tahu apa dengar band gap engineering, it means that we we engineer the band gap we determine what band gap we want because the band gap will give out certain color. So for certain color, we need to have certain band gap. In order to do that, the nature around us uh, have certain band gap only. Maknanya kalau gallium phosphide seketul tu memang band gap dia banyak tu. Allah dah create dia macam tu. So aluminum phosphide, aluminum phosphide pun macam tu. But we can combine these two material Uh, and uh, add a bit of uh, the percentage of gallium inside the aluminium gallium phosphide and we can vary the band gap it to be in between so we can make another compound semiconductor for example here gallium nitride gallium nitride is a uh, direct band gap material it is actually giving out blue interesting So uh, this gallium nitride, you can combine with this material, aluminium nitride. This is ALN, aluminium nitride. You can get, have indium gallium nitride. Indian? Eh, bukan indium, aluminium gallium nitride, sorry. Yeah, aluminium. You can become indium, eh, sorry, al <laughs> aluminium gallium nitride. Aluminium gallium nitride is a compound semiconductor. So, uh, indium. So, if you go down here, this gallium nitride can combine with this indium nitride, and you can have indium gallium nitride. And you can play with the percentage of the indium that you put to have a wavelength in between. So, maknanya besar lah kita boleh vary dia to get the right band gap. 
So that's what, what we call a band gap engineering. We can, if you understand this, we can, for example, we, if you have to design, I say in the final exam, design a laser with a band gap of 2.5. How do you do it? Tak ada pun material kat sini. Tak, 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 tak ada. If you look here, tak ada pun material yang 2.5. So how are you going to do it? By making a compound semiconductor. Eh? Alright, so, so between zinc selenium and cadmium selenium? Uh, zinc selenium and cadmium selenium? No, 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 no. Maybe, but I will... I don't think... I don't know, zinc selenium, I don't think it's direct band gap. But gallium nitride is a... And ilium, uh, indium nitride is a direct band gap. So if I want a laser, oh, yeah. it has to be direct band gap. If it's a detector, yes, later saya cerita lah. Detector tak perlu direct band gap. Detector, indirect band gap pun boleh jadi uh, a detector. But for laser and LED, we need recombination. We need photon coming out. So it has to be direct band gap material. So so I will say you need to do gallium nitride and, and indium nitride. So you need to to make indium gallium nitride and vary the indium percentage. Mm, okay. okay. Boleh? Any question here? So basically, ni lah kepentingan dia. So you can uh, know which material to make the hetero hetero structure, and also what material you can make a compound uh, semiconductor. And then they make color here and merah ni, Madam. merah ni. <coughs> Madam. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Uh, can I ask what is significant to have the Less lattice constant or more lattice constant? Mm. What do you think? What do you think? Ah, Najwa. Jola, boleh jawab soalan Azam. Huh? Oh, dah jual. Huh? Kejap. Kejap, okay. Jadi bagi saya masa untuk berfikir. Baik, saya bagi awak masa. 30 saat. Uh, Medium. Huh? Is it because to avoid the defect? Defect? Avoid defect? Yeah. So, like this constant is the distance, right? So, hmm. macam... If the, the one have a small lattice constant, but the other one have the bigger lattice constant, so it will create like. But I don't think that's the question, Azam's question. Is that your question, Azam? No, can. Can you ask again, Azam? What's, what is the significant to have the less lattice constant or more let, lattice constant? Mm. Isn't the like the characteristic of the materials itself? It's like one material has a as a fixed that is constant compared to other. So you're not answering. So. Huh? So what the answer? So what's the significant? I say that just uh, it's because the material is created like that way. Yes. So memang Allah created ada orang tu mata dia sepet, ada orang tu mata dia besar, ada orang tu hidung dia mancung. Tak so maknanya dah ke hidung mancung dengan hidung sepet tu, eh, mata sepet tu macam what's the significant? Memang tak ada significant, memang Allah buat macam tu. Mata dia memang gitu. Function of the mata sama, boleh tengok. Cuma mata dia bentuk macam tu. Ah, macam itulah. So lattice constant pun macam tu juga. Uh, but um, Okay, maybe that is significant jugalah. Uh, maybe kalau you can imagine a lattice kan, if it's very packed together, um, maybe it will be a good, uh, uh, it will be stronger in terms of radiation, panggil-panggil radiation hard material. So kalau kita, kita for, for example kan, imagine kalau dia rapat-rapat ni, awak tumbuk dia kan, dia macam, dia tak, dia kuat sikit lah. Compared to yang, jauh-jauh ni. Uh, so so and dia ada significant for example kalau jauh-jauh ni 
uh, apa nama ni radiation berlegi tengah-tengah. Kalau dekat sangat ni uh, dia akan interact dengan atom. So dia adalah konsekuensi yang lain tu. Tapi generally we say uh, dia memang Allah kereta dia gitu macam dia tak adalah I'm not say uh, we cannot just say that uh, apa nama indium uh, nitride ni is less bagus daripada cadmium selenium. Tapi mungkin in certain application yang saya kata radiation hard ke tapi beyond kelas ni lah and mungkin juga beyond knowledge saya. Okay boleh Azam. I mean eh, uh, dia ada different usage lah. Yes. Semua benda ada different usage. Allah kata dalam Quran apa uh, dalam surah apa tu Allah kata everything Allah uh, created be kodan. Um, with precise precision of everything and with with, uh, with meaning. Tak ada apa-apa yang Allah create tak ada meaning. Semua ada meaning. Kenapa pokok ni condong macam gitu sikit pun ada meaning. So semua ada meaning. Cuma kita manusia kena find out. Uh, apakah apa signifikan uh, kalau dia ni elastis kuasa besar, kecil mungkin tak jumpa lagi. Kalau kita tak ada, mungkin semua ada sebenarnya. Tapi benda kita tahu kita tahu je lah. For now on the lattice quantum side uh, i don't really understand i don't know but uh, i can think in terms of kekuatan dia lah relation hmm. funny uh, thing though diamond is higher than silicon carbide in lattice constant so oops <laughs> so in terms of density of the sebab dia kalau atom tu lattice constant dia lagi rapat density dia lebih tinggi lah kan betul hmm. yes so lower lattice constant higher density Yes, low density, high density. So high density means you know you can use it for certain application if you want the high density material. Okay. Alright. Ah, uh, pukul satu dah. Yeah, I think that's enough for today. Um, I want you to go and ask me question lagi next class. Ah, uh, and then uh, next class saya bagi satu round lagi tanya soalan. Lepas tu saya akan rap. Ah, uh, so you better ask important question. Uh, saya akan suap, listkan semua soalan dulu baru saya akan pilih soalan mana saya nak jawab So bukan macam kali ni So everybody need to list in the telegram their question Before the class lah so that, And then I will choose what question to answer uh, Then lepas tu kita rat habis dah slide nombor satu Masuk slide nombor dua Boleh? Boleh madam Okay good uh, Can we end the class with a doa please? Somebody Apa giliran siapa kali ni? Ke dah habis giliran ke? Semua orang dah baca doa ke? Mana habis? Silakan. Alhamdulillah, Nishatana Rajin, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'in hmm. Allah maja'an jama'ana Hadha jama'an marhuma Wa tafarukna min ba'dihi tafarukna ma'asuma hmm. Wa la taj'alillahumma fina Wa la ma'ana Wa la man yatba'una syakiyan Wa la matrudan Wa la mahluma hmm. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana Fi al-akhirati hasana Tawakina azab al-nar Salallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahabi salim Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin and just to Okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.